Welcome back friends to the shop. Today, we're going to attempt to build the perfect hammer handle. I'll tell you what, building the perfect hammer handle is not as easy as you might think. You, there is a temptation to try to reinvent the wheel, and I, and I did that with axe handles, and I, well, it was a, basically a waste of many years of my effort. You stick to what, uh, has evolved you know through hundreds of years of use so that's why i'm such a huge advocate of finding these old or hanging on to these old tool handles when you find them so these are various ones that i've made and these have all been made by hand you can see this is one of the first ones that i did and it's it's not very good but i seem to kind of gravitate and i like to have that that swell in the middle it feels good uh, to me in the hand because usually when you're using these hammers you're choked up on them a little bit they're they're small hammers they're made for fine detail work um, and you do end up choking up on them and rarely do you use the outside of it so some interesting things um, one of the th this is a cool one so this is one of my saw filing hammers and i was really like this is an atkins and i was really lucky to find the original handle shape. This is not the original handle, but it is a, a near exact duplicate of what the original handle was. It was just carved out to me by hand. And I very much enjoyed it. I like the palm swell uh, on this, but I don't like the way it tapers back. What I've been finding is I like, I like to have a little bit of a taper in there, but a little bit more consistent. This here is a perfect example. This is the other one, you know, the mate to the to the handle, the head that we're going to be putting the deal on today, and this has a very a ple or very a pleasing feel to it. Um, it's got that swell. I like them narrow in here in the center. For some reason, it just it makes me feel like a it's more of a precision instrument than a, cl a clunky or blocky club. And you see, there's very little swell back with a little bit of a of a flip. Uh, towards the end. Now here is, this is the one that I showed in the thumbnail yesterday. This is really a cool find. This is a, a very old Indian fire handle, Tennessee. And this is when they were making handles for guys that knew how to discern, you know, that, that, that expected the best. And this, I think, is probably the high water mark. I mean, they've put a, a varnish on there. They've burnished and they've burnt the handle. But li just little details, like they, they quit they taped that off. They didn't varnish the top there where it goes into the head. And it's a uh, grain orientation is good. It's, it's nice. It's a, uh, it's a cool handle. Um, but it, unfortunately it's too small for this little guy here. It's just not going to work, but I am hopeful to find something that that will fit. So that leaves us to what feels the best in my hand. And that's this one right here. Uh, so we're going to go with this, which very well may be the original handle. So how do we duplicate this on the lathe? Well, I'm not really sure. I watched a couple YouTube videos and we're going to try to figure this out together. And what was done in the YouTube videos was um, they took and they traced it on a piece of paper like so. And that gives us our basic shape. And now we can draw and measure and get some data points here. Actually, that pencil didn't work. I couldn't really see the line. So th this will be, a, of course, we have to account for the thickness of the pen, but this will be a easier to read. We'll use the Sharpie here because we're going to want to use this um, when we're building the new handle. Okay, there basically we have it. It's probably an eighth over, a quarter over overall, if I had to guess. Okay, this gets us a place where we can start. Here's what I did, and this is the plan. So I've actually taken, we've taken some measurements across here and recorded exactly what we have. So what we have at the very widest point, we've got an inch and a quarter, two and a half inches in, we're an inch and an eighth, five inches in, we're an inch, three quarters, five eighths at the smallest, and then up to 13 sixteenths. And then of course, we ran out of paper there, but we will have to measure the head. So that's gonna give us a benchmark. So what I'm hoping to do is if we put this on the lathe, we can set uh, these caliper deals here to the thickness that we want and we can measure these out we can go along so this is the billet that we're going to use I have two choice I have, can't decide here on which one I should start with so the widest portion of this handle is an inch and a quarter so I've ripped a billet of, of hickory at an inch and a quarter and then I've ripped a second one at an inch and a half now this what I'm wondering is would, if we do inch and a quarter that's what we need to finish at. There's not going to be room to remove the tool marks and to sand it, and it's ultimately going to end up too small. So I think we should probably, we'll go over a quarter, and we'll start with an inch and a half. That gives us an eighth 
uh, each side to make that work. So we have this beautiful, clear um, American hickory handle with a nice grain in it uh, that's going to be a perfect billet for this. So as you can see here, what we need to do is once we get it chalked up in the lathe is we need to do our two and a half or five or seven, nine and ten, cut down to those points and then pull or, or I guess I guess remove all the wood to those. So let's uh, let's start, see how it goes. I, I don't know very little about working with lathes, so we're kind of uh, learning together here. I'm so annoyed with myself. My friend Stu showed me a better way to do this in the shop and I completely forgot about it. So I'm back to the my old simple ways. I really should have paid better attention to the my, my wood shop class. <laughs> All this stuff. Okay, so uh, I think this is called the tailstock here. Uh, this is the I don't even know what you call this thing, the chuck or the spur that came with it, and had some scary moments on this one because boy, once those teeth dig in, and if you put too much pressure, uh, uh, man, that wood's got to go somewhere. These lathes are powerful. Anyway, my buddy Stu bought, brought me this one here. It's a safety tip and that fits in there. So what happens is if, uh, if you put too much pressure on it, it just spins rather than uh, uh, tries to kill you and take out your window. So I'll put my diagram right here. So the dude on the YouTube channel, he seemed to be all knowing about this. Um, and so what he did was he marked, he came over here and he marked this. So we have, we've got a two and a half, right? Right there. We've got a five. We got a, a seven. These are our reference points. We got a nine. And we got a ten and a half. Right here. Now if we turn on the lathe, can we see these these marks? Yes, we can. The problem I have here is I don't even know what I don't need. I've got some. I've got these lathe tools, but I don't know what they're for. <laughs> I don't know what they're for. So um, going off of memory, the the one that the guy used to cut these grooves, it looks something like this guy right here. Actually, it yeah, it feels pretty sharp. Let's uh let's just dig in. So here's what I've done. So this first line right here, we've got to come in um, an inch and an eighth is our finish. So I've set these caliper deals here at inch and an eighth. And we'll uh, we'll cut it. I don't even know what speed to run this thing. All I know is I don't want that rest to hit the hit this deal, and I want to be close close as I can. All right, I'm going to start with we'll start with a thousand. All right, we got it, okay. Here we have our benchmarks here. Again, I haven't done this before, but it seems to make sense. So these lines are reference points that kind of correspond with the shape of the handle. So now, I guess in theory, uh, we could start back here at the end and then uh, start working these and connecting these these um, uh, rings here uh, to get our shape. So far, so good here. So I have the, I have the sh basic shape that I like. Uh, now's the, now's now we're getting into deep water here. The the uh, how do we make it oval? Because as we know, a round handle is not as uh, comfortable and as pleasing as an oval handle. That's the trick. Please forgive the fan noise in the background. Uh, the lathe makes a lot of dust. So what I don't know, so grain orientation, we, this is what I'm not clear on. We've got our grain orientation running this way and we want the hammer 
head to sit like this, right? With the grain, so close enough. So we have to do an offset of a quarter inch because there's a quarter inch and a half to inch and a quarter of the width of the handle, but I can't figure out which one, uh, which way it would be. Would it be this way or would it be the other way? I think it would be across the grains. So, well, if we don't do it right, we'll get it right next time. So I'll mark that there. And I'll mark this here. I've got this set at a quarter of an inch. I am certainly not a pessimist, but I don't know how much faith I <laughs> this is so delicate. I don't know how much faith I have in, uh, in this actually working. <laughs> oh boy, that's, I mean, there's just almost not enough wood there. I'm going to just go inside of that. Almost not enough wood there to, uh, to bite into. This is going to be a tricky, tricky business here, I think. So I don't, I don't know how good of an idea this is, guys. So we, now what we've got, you can see here, is our handle is offset. And the Holmes there on the uh, YouTube video, this is what he did. But I don't, he didn't show how to know. I don't know how far to go, I guess, when I get to the, to the middle point of or something. I don't even know what's going to happen when I turn this thing on. I think I'm going to turn, it, turn the speed way down. Let's just, uh, I'm going to stand off to the side here. There's a good chance that we might be going to the hospital today. Okay, so that's, that's 100 and 200 RPMs. Oh man, I don't know, I like the look of that. That's 800. I'll go down to seven, maybe 700. I think that's what he was using. Oh, I think it's important that we're gonna need to go very slow on this process. I just don't know what to expect. I don't even know what tool to use. All right. Ooh. You guys are not going to believe this, but I actually found that little tiny black set screw on the shop floor. <laughs> I thought we were going to have to go back to the Widowmaker. Now, had I had I ha put a little Loctite 243 on there, I wouldn't have been crawling around on my hands and knees like an animal looking for it. In all honesty, I have I have no idea if this is even going to work or how this is going to turn out but i haven't i haven't hurt myself yet so that's a that's a good start So that actually worked. And, you know, once I got past the initial terror of it flying off and hitting me in the face, I um, it, it wasn't too bad. Now I there's one thing that I'm definitely doing wrong. There must be a trick to this: is to know how far to come in from each side. I just had to guess, and and actually I can see right here I I went too far. There's a little bit. Of, it's a little bit deep right there for than the other side but overall it's reasonably consistent um, but if a guy could figure out exactly if you could see a line or something exactly where to stop um, that would make a huge difference so i guess that's about as far as we can go here um, i'll have i can't go any smaller there I'll, I'll hit the i'll hit the deal so we're gonna have to hand we'll hand carve that but um, but this is actually a beautiful handle. 
let's put a chamfer on it here. I guess no, we can't put a chamfer on it because it's we're just we're just out of room. I mean, I'm right up to the to the holders there. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go put it on the bench. Thank you.